Hey gang, we are at Montrose Cemetery in Chicago again. We've been here before. And today we're going to tell a little story about a family who is buried here. Family that is definitely forgotten. And we're going to walk to the grave. I'm going to tell you the story, very sad story, of course, as many of our stories are, unfortunately. Well, when people die, it's usually a sad story. But this happened nearby here, actually. This is kind of close to home for me because the high school that this boy went to was one of the two high schools I probably would have went to, and I knew a lot of the kids because we had moved away just before Main East High School. And the boy's name was Jeffrey Futches. Jeffrey Futches, and he would do a terrible, terrible thing. I'll start out by telling you that his best friend, Cliff, Cliff Sladnik, they were in the band together. And you just wonder if you can look around or size up your friends, especially your best friend, and could you ever imagine if you really know them, and if they might explode to do something like this. Not according to Cliff, no way. He was in shock when he heard that his best friend was a murderer who wiped his entire family out. Now this is just walking along here. Before I tell you the story, I was just saw this Grave, Selma, that's a familiar name. I don't know if you guys were watching one of my prior episodes. Let's have a look. Gustav. Swedish. Last name is Wendt, W-E-N-D-T. German or Swedish, Norwegian. I know Selma is. Let's have a close look. Isn't that a, aren't these pictures marvelous? And then let's see what Selma, Selma's image. Beautiful image. Definitely European, European descent. So yeah, it was a brutal day at the Futch's household. I mean, they had, Cliff had no idea. They were best friends. They were in the band together. These two guys did everything together. And they were also wrestlers on the, on the, on the high school, well, it was more gym class. And they would talk about everything. But Cliff would have no idea what was brewing in Jeffrey's mind because it all erupted on this fateful day. And what's interesting though is Cliff said that just before it happened, there were just weird, there were a few weird signs. And one was that he would, they were, you know, they were getting ready to go to college and like, what college are you going to? And what are you planning? And, and Jeffrey had no, he was just kind of like, on the, anything to do with the future, he was just kind of mute on it. So that kind of tells you, it's just kind of a hint, if something bad's going to happen, if somebody's going to do something like this, they're not thinking about the future. <laughs> Hindsight 2020, right? Yeah. So, it all started, well... Piecing it back together, it was a normal day. We have Jeffrey, his mom Ruth, his dad Raymond, his brother Scott, sister Linda. It was a Friday, June 14th, 1974. 1974, many of us were in high school or college. 
demographics of this channel, I have to laugh. Like me, I was a freshman in high school and Linda was attending an ice cream social and then she left and she was hanging out with her friend at her friend's house. Maybe she was gonna stay overnight. Maybe not. But Jeffrey called her there and he's like, hey, it's 6 p.m., get over here, make dinner. We need you to make dinner. Kind of an odd call, she said. She said, forget it, I'm, I'm with my friend and go figure it out. Well, at 9 p.m., he called back again. He's like, you need to get home. His parents, by the way, earlier in the evening, Ruth and Ray, they were shopping at Square Deal Shoes and Displays here. It's around 7.30, kind of at the same time in the middle of all this. Well, Linda did come home. Her friend ironically walked her home and must not have gone in the house because they all would never be seen alive again. Now, Ruth's mom, her name was Emma, Grandma, was supposed to pick Ruth up from the airport and like, or take Ruth to the airport and Ruth was, you know, it, no, I think she was supposed to pick her up from the airport and, you know, it was one of those no-show things so she went over to the house and she started poking around and she saw smoke coming from the chimney, but nobody would answer the door, the phone wasn't working. So she waited until Monday, the next day, I think that was on a Sunday, and still no answer. So she called the police. She called the fire department actually. And they came over and that's when they that's when they discovered the gruesome scene. What did they discover? They discovered the bodies. They first discovered Dad. Dad was, Raymond and Ruth were found dead in the basement along with his brother and sister. They were all down there. Cook County Coroner said that he had murdered them all just before committing suicide. All five were dead. Jeffrey was discovered in the kitchen, on the kitchen floor, and it was later discovered that he had set up two bombs. One bomb was set up as a more elaborate big bomb with candles and strings and all this goofy stuff. Luckily it didn't go off. Well, it probably wouldn't have made any difference to the deceased, but then there was a smaller bomb that was going and that was how the fire was discovered. And he had committed these murders in quite a brutal fashion. According to the coroner, he shot his sister and father in the head. He strangled his mother and brother with a rope but that wasn't enough. He had to stab his mother in the throat and beat his brother over the head. And before killing his family, which is really kind of creepy, just before he did all this, of course he had it all planned out, he went to his grandma's house and he dropped off some peculiar things. He dropped off the yearbook, he dropped off his diploma, and he brought the family dog there to a nearby home of his grandmother, Emma. Well, it's, it's, it's just, you have to wonder what was happening behind closed doors what was going on in that house. Again, things appear, in many cases, totally normal on the outside. It's like the perfect marriages, right? The perfect family. Who knows what was going on? We'll never know. 
But what we do know is that boy exploded. And we it's not like he had a it's not like he was seeing a psychiatrist or anything. So it is just a crazy story to me. And it's a story I wanted to do because mainly they're forgotten. They're, the story is, you can't find really anything about it. And when I came here to the cemetery, here to Montrose, working with the cemetery staff, and they're great. Anthony here, shout out. He got me close, but when you check the records, there are no markers for this family. None whatsoever. Now, the only clue we have here, according to the records, is they are part or buried under some monument right here. Right here. And I checked for the father's name, I checked for the mother's name, I checked for all their names. And as an example, we saw at Mount Carmel where you'll have a family like this and then on the back you'll have friends or family, mostly other family members that are related, but not here. Not that I could find. However, however, I did find one monument with the last name and it's just totally confusing and maybe maybe we can figure this out together somehow but the only futches that I can see on a monument is right here Adolf Futches January 18th 1887 to March 31st 1910 23 years old now this is a couple of generations before the story, right? Is that two generations? We'll have to figure it out. But here's what I'm talking about. What? There's no, there's no markers. And I would love to, I would love to get them markers or a stone for all of them. Maybe we can try to do this. But right now, right now we, we're out of luck. So let's see what we can find. Let's see what we can discover together. Maybe we won't have any success, maybe we will, but for the Futches, uh, all I can say is I hope they're resting in peace and let's, let's not forget them. Here comes the rain.